Hello, Internet. My name is Quinn, and this is Blondie Hacks. This is Lathe Skills number nine for jaw chucks. This is a series of quick videos on getting started in machining. If you like my content, please do subscribe on Patreon, where I post exclusive project videos and 3D models and engineering drawings of all my projects. Lots of cool stuff just for patrons. Okay, let's dive in. I'm not a mathematician, but I think this is a one, two, carry this three. This is actually a three jaw chuck. And we're starting here because it's actually useful when to know when you don't need the four jaw chuck. Uh, for example, you know, you machine one end, you do some operations on it, and all you want to do is face the far end of it. That's actually really common. So even though, as we talked about in the concentricity video, flipping your part or moving your part at all in a three jaw chuck is a no-no for concentricity, if all you're going to be doing is facing the end, uh, concentricity doesn't actually matter. All that's going to happen is the tool marks uh, actually technically won't be centered on the face, but uh, uh, I won't tell anyone if you don't. And I also want to show you something called bumping in. The uh, part might actually be just a little bit crooked within the jaws, and that source of run out we can actually fix uh, by bumping it in. Okay, I've got this stock uh, in the three jaw chuck here, and you can see just after throwing it in there, I've got about four thousandths of run out, which is not atypical. Now that run out might be due to the material just being a little crooked in the jaws rather than anything uh, in the chuck itself. So what we can do is Turn it until the indicator shows our low spot. And now what that means is if the plunger moves this way, it's gonna come back towards where the high spot was. So I wanna move the stock this way. I can do that with my machinist hammer, which is uh, a, a hammer with uh, soft faces so that uh, it, it won't damage the surface. And I'm gonna use the brass end there and I just pull my indicator out so that I don't damage it. And tampy tamp tamp, and just like that. We're down to maybe three quarters of a thousandth of run out. So we've gotten down to what might be a very acceptable level for the, uh, for the part that we need. Now the object of the exercise, the four jaw chuck. Now the most common use of this guy is uh, to do a second operation after the three jaw where we needed to move or, or shift the part and we need to maintain our concentricity. So we need to dial in this part to get our concentricity. Now, the first thing we do is get it uh, kind of close to center, and we do that with these reference lines on here. These aren't racing stripes. These are actually ways to help you kind of get in the ballpark of centering your part in the chuck. So what I like to do is uh, get all of the jaws lined up with one of these lines and in a, in a position that's close to where, you know, you know, where your part is being held. Uh, and then just start cranking each jaw in on the opposite sides and just count your turns on the chuck key. And if you make the same number of turns on each side, starting from the same line on each side, you're gonna end up within about a hundred thousandths of center. And the next order of business is we need to set up an indicator that is on center vertically on our stock and can be aligned with one of the jaws of the chuck. And uh, I recommend putting this guy on your uh, tool post or on your cross slide or somewhere up here, uh, because what that will allow you to do then is use your slides to position the indicator, which is extremely handy. Okay, so next we're gonna bring the indicator up to our stock and you're gonna preload it. You wanna be able to have range for this indicator to move in both directions without either bottoming out or running out of travel and coming off of the material. So there are different ways to dial in stock, but uh, I'm gonna show you the way that I think is the easiest to learn, even if it's not the fastest. I think it's good for beginners. So uh, start by putting the indicator at zero on the uh, low spot. So you'll see that when I turn it here, it goes up to 47 thousandths. So that's where we got to just by counting our, our turns you know, from the reference line. So we got to within 50 thousandths, which is not too bad. So we go in two phases. The first are what, what you might call the large moves. And then the second phase is tightening in. So for starters, go to the lowest spot. So you can see we're going, we're going up to 47 thousandths and we're down to here. Zero is our low spot. Now what we're going to do is we want to move the stock this way half of our run out. So since we know we have 47 thousandths of run out, the goal is to move the stock somewhere in here somewhere, which will be about half of the run out that we have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen the jaw that's near me just a little bit. That's all I need. And then we're going to go 180 degrees. And then I'm going to snug up this jaw and that's going to push my stock away from the indicator. And then I'm going to watch that indicator. And if I get to about the halfway point, then I'm going to stop. Now I moved it maybe 10 thousandths. So I'm going to do that again. 
Notice how it didn't go to zero that time because we're closing in on that zero run out. So now I'm gonna loosen this guy, another little notch like that. I'm gonna go back to, to my high spot and I'm gonna crank this in. Right about there, it's getting tight, so I'm gonna stop. And let's see where we're at. So now our low spot is maybe 14 and our high spot is 31, 32. Now, if you wanna get really fast at this, if you do that arithmetic in your head, you can actually uh, do this in fewer moves because you can actually calculate how far you need to move it each time. And when you're learning, anytime you get lost, you can always just put your low spot back at zero and take another check and see where you're at. So we're at about 22 there. Now, you'll notice that even though I zeroed that at my low spot, I actually have about two thousandths here that is between two jaws that's actually the low spot. Now that doesn't actually matter. All you wanna do is consider the positions that, are, that have the jaw aligned with the indicator. If you just always make moves in this position, eventually those, uh, those kind of angled run out areas will self-correct. Okay, so once again, going to the lowest spot that is aligned with a jaw, we'll take this spot right here. And we're gonna loosen this guy. Go to the far side and we're going to bring that guy in half of the distance or until it gets tight and then we'll see where we're at okay as you can see we're kind of closing in on it now again to help show you how this is working i'm going to re-zero it on every low spot but as you get good at this you won't need to do that you'll just kind of close in on it using whatever numbers happen to be there okay so now now we're down to nine thousandths looking good so we'll do one more small move here on this jaw. Go up to 9,000, there's our high spot. So we're gonna be trying to tighten that into about four and a half or until it gets tight. So it got tight there. Getting real close now. Just give it a, one more little bump. So now we're in phase two because we're down to just a couple of thousandths. We're actually within one thousandth there. So now this is the phase that we call tightening in. So at this point, you can do this from about five thousandths down usually. Now we start going to the high spot. So this is the high spot on our indicator. And what we're gonna do is we're not gonna loosen any jaws anymore. We're just gonna start tightening them. And as I tighten this, you'll see that run out come out of there. So again, I'm going half the distance. So there's about half thousandth right there. And you might need to do this a few times and you need you do need to tighten all four jaws but uh, you can start by just going to your high spot each time snugging that guy in okay so we're probably within a few tenths there which is as good as the surface finish is on this part anyway so the last thing we want to do is just kind of go around all four jaws and make sure that they're tight and you want to kind of just do the same amount of squeeze on each jaw and try not to move the indicator needle. You just wanna make sure that they're tight, which by this point they usually all are because you've been cranking them all around. There you go, we've got a couple of tenths in there or that might be a surface imperfection on the part. But that part is now dialed in. We've got our concentricity back and we're ready for our second operations. Generally, when you do this, you want to use a part that has a machined surface. Uh, that's usually the case because you're doing a second operation probably, which is why you're using the fore jaw. Because if you need to dial in a, a part that has a rough surface or an unknown surface, there may be low spots or imperfections that are going to cause that indicator needle to jump around a fair bit. And uh, so you kind of have to average the numbers that you're seeing and just kind of get close. Now the forejaw can do lots of cool stuff besides just second operations. For example, for this part, I needed a flat surface on the side of this cylindrical part. So as you can see, I was able to just chuck it up and do a facing operation. And now I have a flat side on my cylinder. And of course you can hold square stock in the forejaw chuck, uh, but let's say I needed to drill a hole in this L-shaped part. The forejaw chuck will allow me to clamp down on that guy as well. And not only that, because these four jaws are all independent, Remember that you can shift your part in space. So if you need to drill off-center holes to create eccentrics, camshafts, things like that, uh, crankshafts, you can do all of that in the four jaw chuck as well. So there's a reason that uh, the four jaw independent is the machinist's favorite. And the more you learn about it, the more you will love it. And that is the four jaw chuck in a nutshell. 
I hope you found this useful. If you enjoy my content, please do consider supporting me on Patreon, and we will see you next time.